Hello, my name is Ray Roberts and I'm going to be making some kimchi. This recipe is a part of the Kim Jang Project's book called 21 Authentic Kimchi Recipes. I've never made kimchi before, so this is quite useful for me because I have no idea what I'm doing otherwise. And the recipe I'll be doing today is stuffed cucumber kimchi, or in Korean, oi, oi, <laughs> oi sobagi, oi sobagi. I'm, I'm not Korean and I'm going to butcher the language. Okay, let's make some kimchi. It says in the book to either use large cucumbers, but I could only find small little ones today. With little cross sections, leaving about half an inch. So you have like a little cucumber octopus going on. That's a perfect, look at that. That's a perfect cucumber. That's like the level of chunkiness that I, that I need in my life. Gently open each slit and sprinkle coarse sea salt inside and all around the cucumber. They, they recommend using Korean coarse sea salt. Cheon il, cheon il nyom, cheon il nyom, cheon il nyom, probably probably awful. I'm making a little bit more than what the book is saying. It's saying to use about 20 grams of sea salt, which is about a teaspoon. So I'm gonna use a little bit more. And now to gently massage these cucumbers. This is the most fun I've ever had. Look at that. That's one salty cucumber. So once your cucumbers are well and thoroughly assaulted with salt, leave them for about 15 to 20 minutes, turn them over every five minutes. I'll just let them chill in their salt. So it's been 20 minutes and I'm gonna rinse these bad boys. Just giving a bath to some cucumbers. Right, now that I've drained the cucumbers, I'm gonna leave them to the side for about an hour until they're completely dry. So while my cucumbers are drying, I'm going to prepare the stuffing. This is my radish. I need about 200 grams of this radish. This is definitely a lot more than 200 grams. So what you're aiming for is these little julienne radishes. Next on the list for the stuffing is an onion, because I'm making a little bit more than what the... I'm gonna use half an onion. Onion going in. Now, now that I'm crying. And now next is, oh my God. Ugh. Bring onion, more onion. Cut off the ends, finely chop them. Into the bowl, you take your chives and you wanna cut them in half lengthways so that they're thinner. And then cut into three centimeter lengths. Now add the chives in. So far this is smelling very fresh. Again, like the radish, you want little matchsticks. Only 10 grams of garlic. I'm gonna add more. You can tell this is a slightly Filipino influenced version by the amount of garlic. Filipinos love garlic. There's something very therapeutic about smashing garlic. Just finely chop your garlic. Okay. Oh, the smell of garlic. Now it's ginger. Why waste your hard-earned cash on a peeler when a spoon is incredibly effective? The book recommends five grams of ginger, but I really like ginger as well as garlic. That's all the chopping done. Season it, get your little salt back in about seven grams, half a tablespoon. Now we're gonna add the Korean red chili powder and you're gonna only want about a tablespoon. Funnily enough, this is the smallest bag that I could find at my nearest Korean supermarket. This is a lot more than a tablespoon, but it means I have enough to last a lifetime. For all the kimchi I can ever make, about half a tablespoon of sugar. Now some fish sauce. This one's branded anchovy sauce, which is it's the same thing. That's a bit more than a tablespoon. And lastly, you want fermented shrimp paste. At my local supermarket, this is what I found. This doesn't really look like a paste to me. So I'm gonna chop it up and try to make it into a paste. It also says in the book, you can replace fish sauce and the fermented shrimp paste with just more salt if you wanna make it vegan. And now it says to gently mix them evenly. So here are my cucumbers, which have been drying. I think you just shove it on in. Once you stuff them, you can leave them in an airtight container at room temperature and it will start to ferment and the flavor will become more full. It says here, this kimchi is ready to eat fresh. But if you want a fuller flavor, you can leave it to get that kind of fermented taste. Well, this one's an octopus. Look at that, that's like a banana peel. And there we go. That's the first time I've ever made kimchi. I'm gonna garnish it with a bit of sesame seed. <laughs> that's my first kimchi. 
So this is Gabs. She was filming the video and now she's gonna try the food with me. I take this one, chop the end. Mm -hmm. I hear that crunch. There's a real big kick from the from the chili powder, but then the cucumber at the same time kind of refreshes your mouth. There's like a war going on in my mouth. I think what works really well is the flavor from the fermented shrimp paste and the fish sauce, as well as the sugar kind of like spread the, the spice. You okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think this is a really good recipe if you want to make something from the book that will be like really good immediately. I love the kick. You can mm. pretty much feel it immediately. The big old, it's a big punch. But I love how it's just like, it's all rounded out. Like it's spicy but refreshing at the same time. I imagine this would be really good at like summertime. Like at like a barbecue or something. How would you rate this compared to like store-bought packaged kimchi? This is so much better. It's just a lot more fresher, I think. It doesn't taste manufactured. The really satisfying crunch of the radish and the cucumber. That's good. I'm pretty proud of myself. <laughs> I'm not proud of you. I'm proud of myself for how my first kimchi ever went. Yeah, I think I did all right. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> this recipe has the approval from two Filipinos. Mm -hmm. Maserat.